listen up. You're listening to the capsule. Capsule all day. Yo, it's the capsule. You're done. The capsule. The capsule. The capsule. Enjoy the tea. All right, welcome back to the capsule. Um, I'm super fucking busy um, last week and this week, and I got a million things to do that I'm behind on, but I made a promise to do this every week, so here I am. Um, <clears throat> going to make it a shorter one this week because the last couple, there's been a lot to talk about, and we've talked too much, and it went on for a bit long, but it's all good. Uh, hope everyone's good and had a good week, so... Just going to whiz through some of the shit that happened this week. Um, So first of all, ICE called out the criminals. Let's start on a high. Um, After the event that I spoke about last week, it was the Company Flies event. Um, I'm piecing together from the public information that is put out there. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just going off what I've been told um, or what's been put out there. Um, Ice and Bad Machine battled Um, They've battled a few times Um, From the looks of things There was a bit of How do I say that? Like an altercation Um, And they spoke And I don't know exactly what was said However, the next During the week um, Ice put up an Insta story saying that he wants to call out um, The Criminals crew who are a super huge, famous crew from France. And he said that he wants to do um, a five-on-five battle, criminals crew versus, and in quotes, UK all-stars. Um, there's not really much to say about this. I mean, it is what it is. Um, apparently, from the comment that Ice put on the capsule page underneath this post, um the reason that he said UK All-Stars as opposed to like a certain crew versus a certain crew is because there was a comment made about London being hit Bad Machine's town or something like that. This is what Ice says. So that's Ice's reasoning for putting UK versus um, criminals. Someone commented, I don't know who they were, but someone commented and asked, why is it UK versus criminals? Shouldn't it be crew versus criminals or UK versus France. It's a fair point. Um, I think it's partially because of the London town comment and maybe it should be London All-Stars versus Criminals. Um, But also, yeah, maybe Ice doesn't have a specific crew that he wants to back him on this and he's just like, I'll just pick five guys and let's go. Um, I mean, there was a lot of conversation around this. I don't know why. Like, fair play to him. Do you know what I mean? Like, He's allowed to call people out and to say that he wants to settle it by battling, especially when the talk was about battling and who's better and stuff like that. So if he's like, cool, let's let's have a battle. Why the fuck not? Um, Whether the criminals will respond or or even do it is another story. Who knows? Um, Whether logistically that's going to be a simple thing to sort out. Probably not. But again, like that's not really ISIS problem in calling someone out like what's the harm in it you know um if he wants to call them out and say hey i want to battle you cool if it doesn't happen because of logistics also you know that's to be expected if it does and then something is organized then cool um uk battled france at ibe in 2014 and it was the uk poppers versus the french poppers and ibe got a hold of it and made it a thing um maybe through renegade i think i'm not sure but they put it on as an exhibition battle as part of their event. So if this gets somebody catches wind of it and they want to put it on an event where they want this battle to happen, cool, it could happen. If they all happen to be at the same event, cool. If somebody wants to travel to each other's place to, to do the battle and it's that big of a deal that they want to do the traveling, then cool. You know, um, I, I don't know why it matters. Like, oh, they're not going to respond or something. It's like, well... Okay, cool, but let him call them out and say, I want to battle you, which is is totally fair and within his rights, especially if he's responding to comments that were made about his dancing, you know? Um, Yeah, not really much else to say on that, you know? It is what it is, and I'd love to see that battle. Um, Am I going to organise it to happen? Probably not, Uh, but 
you know, I'd love to see it if it does happen. Um, what else? So the, there was a, um, a battle this weekend, uh, third culture kids jam. It was an all styles battle, um, that happened this weekend. It was a similar kind of concept of Red Bull where it was like audience voted with different cards and, um, and it was to like pop music and then a normal song and that type of stuff. To be honest with you, the, so the, the jam that happened was, <clears throat> uh, put on in aid of Cancer Research UK. And the entry fee was not even like, you don't even pay the people. You just donate to Cancer Research UK and show the proof that you've donated on your phone and they let you in. So I guess uh, because the organizer had, you know, something happen to him or it was it's a cause that was related to him somehow so he cared enough to put on this jam um so i'm not going to really you know criticize an event that is put on with this type of intention you know like it, it was a cool jam um it was fun uh it was like it didn't try and do too much or be too big it was just one category top eight uh, it was from 12 until five, finished about three. And then there was a couple hours of, I guess, like people jamming and ciphering really dope location in the middle of Shoreditch. Um, I've been there for a few times for like sample sales and stuff like that. It's a nice little venue. Um, it's called new in yard. Um, yeah, like, I mean, the music was more like, it felt more like a breaking jam than a top styles jam, but it's fine. It's an all styles battle. And there's been plenty of all styles battles where it's only like hip hop and popping music. So I'm not mad at that. You know, it's their jam. If they, if that's the tone they want to set with their music, then great. You know, everything pretty much ran on time. Um, it was a cypher prelims. Um, and then they chose a top eight. It's an interesting topic, like cypher prelims, which I'm not going to really get into too much because I want to not keep this. Uh, I want to not make this an hour long podcast, but, um, about like, how do you go about doing a cypher prelim? Because it's not the same. It's not just like you go and show one round and if it's good enough, you get in. It's like there's a whole different dynamic to how you get through a cypher prelim and how you... It, there's like a whole thing about cypher etiquette and cypher rules and dominating a cypher that all comes into play. I mean, it wasn't such a high stakes event that it mattered that much. But um, yeah, it's just something I thought about. Maybe I'll talk about it in future or I'll probably come up on one of the podcasts with people. Um... So yeah, it was a cool jam, like shout out to them for putting that on and doing it for a good cause. I really like stuff like this. Like I said a few times, like I think we need the range, you know, we need the big battles, we need the little jams, we need the stuff for good intentions, we need the stuff for competitive reasons, we need the stuff for social reasons. Like the more stuff we have, the more people have somewhere to fit in and the more everyone feels kind of included in our scene, you know, so I think that's a good thing. And um yeah, man, I, I, I'm glad they didn't try and do a million styles just to, like, pack people in. Um, they just did one thing. I think a lot of events could learn from that, like, not doing too much and making it long and, and unpleasant for us to be at, you know? Like, yes, you get us all in the door because we all want to compete, but it's just not fun because we have to sit through, like, six hours of prelims and the, the finals finish at two in the morning, you know? It's just long, like... So, yeah, props to them for putting on a nice little fun event. Like, yeah, more of that, please. Um... Infante was the guest and Ryan Soul Tribe beat him in the finals. It's a fun battle, both breakers, but like they had to dance to some like silly songs, like they had to dance to Barbie Girl and stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, similar concept to Red Bull, uh, just on a smaller scale. And it was, it was fun. Why not? Um, yeah, I don't really have a criticism or anything for an event like that. Um, they're just doing their thing and trying to make some money for a good cause. So props to them. Shout out to Third Culture Kids. Um, all right, swiftly moving on to the next topic. Um, so we have another <sighs> AJ, the Cypher Cat and Red Bull. The saga continues. Um, so just to recap for everyone that doesn't know, AJ entered Red Bull Dance Your Style UK London qualifiers. That's a long name. Got won his two battles. So he qualified for a place in the top 16. He then wasn't allowed to battle in the um main uk finals and elise who he beat in his second round replaced him i said all this last week and the videos are up now on monkey flip media's page so you can check out everyone uh who competed um he was told that 
they wanted a clear separation between BC1 and um, Dance Your Style. And I guess because he was a wild card for BC1, he was in a way like disqualified. He wasn't allowed to dance. Um, like I said last week, I think it's all been internally sorted and, and you know, they spoke and stuff. Um, however, he posted today that a B-girl from Belgium uh, called Kameen, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, competed in the Belgium Dance Your Style recently. Now, if... It's weird, like, I get why he's annoyed, because he was kind of under the impression that because he's a breaker, he can't do this, and then now he's seeing other breakers do this, and he's seen other breakers do it in the past. If the rule is that you're not allowed to compete in both in one year, which Red Bull are fully within their rights to do, it's their, both their competitions, then yes, AJ was a wild card for the for BC1 this year. So then I guess even if there was a mistake made in letting him enter the London qualifiers, I see it's a bit annoying that it had to be changed last minute, but I get why he's not allowed to do, to do Dance Your Style. Um Kameen, I can't find that she was a invite or, or anything for the Belgian um, BC1 this year. She was, I think, in 2019, but not this year. As far as I can tell, I may be wrong. Um, so if I am, please let me know. But um, I don't think she was. So if the Red Bull rule is that you can't do both in one year, this kind of tracks and it's fine because... She didn't do the other one, so she did Dance Your Style instead. Um, if she was a invite or, or she danced in the Belgian cypher this year, then I don't know. That's a whole other story, and it's weird that it's different for different places. Um, however, I went on her page to check out, you know, who she was or if she had done Dance Your uh, BC1, and she posted this on her Insta story. So it's important. It, shh, I'm not ready yet. So uh, it's something that one of the, the something that the host said while she was on stage in Dance Your Style, right? So he says this. And we as B-Boys, we have Red Bull Dance, BC1. So it's important. Breaking normally shouldn't be at Red Bull Dance Your Style. That's something important to know, all right? But judges... Are you ready? Three, two, one. Okay, so that was it. So he said, <laughs> breaking normally shouldn't be on Dance Your Style, but, and then continued to say something else. Now, she was, I think from her Insta story, you could probably see it there, is like she was, felt it a bit disrespected about her style. I'm more interested in the fact that what, like he said, Breaking is not usually allowed in Dance Your Style. Is that the, did that come from Red Bull or is that just him assuming that and he's saying, he's making an excuse when he shouldn't, he shouldn't need to or does he know something that we don't like? Why was she allowed to enter if breaking is not allowed? As he said, is if breaking is not usually allowed. He said, but, but what? But she's allowed because what? Um, because AJ wasn't allowed. So this is the discrepancy, I guess. And, there's, I don't know what, I don't, I can't, again, send it to me if I'm missing this, but I can't find any rule that says this about you can't enter if you're a breaker or you're um, only allowed to enter one or the other. Maybe I've missed it somewhere. And if I have, then I'll apologize. But I can't find this rule anywhere. So if, yeah, so I don't know why A, she was allowed and AJ wasn't, unless it's because... You're only allowed to enter one each year. That's the only way this makes sense. Is if you're only allowed to enter one per year, then everything makes sense. If that's not the case, and it's like the host said, breaking is not usually allowed. It's like we need a bit more explanation. That, but what? And why wasn't AJ? And why is she allowed? You know, I don't understand what the deal is there. Um, I, I feel for AJ because it's like he just w wants to know like what the deal is, you know. Um, and he's seeing like these discrepancies. And I think for the rest of us, like it's nice to know because we are going to talk about these things, you know, and if you put on a publicly open competition, you know, if it's an invite or is it invite only, or if it's a show and they change the lineup last minute, it's, 
fine. But if it's a publicly open competition and you have qualifiers and people qualify rightfully so, but then they're disqualified, it's like we kind of, I don't know, as a community, as a scene, we kind of want to know what's going on. Um, I know it's not just AJ like asking about this. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's something to be swept under the rug. I think it's, you know, we, we would like to know what's going on. Um, but yeah, so that, that it's not really like anything to say about that. It's just, um, this rule of that Red Bull have, I guess they're trying to separate the two, um, from what I've heard from AJ and from what he's put on his stories, they're trying to separate and have a clear separation between BC one and dance your style. Cool. So what's the rule? That's what I want to know. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. And, and like I said previously on the podcast, it's Red Bull's competition. They can do what they want. Um, they're within their rights to do it, put whatever rule they want. Um, it's up to us if we enter that's up to us you know we follow the rules it's the rules of the organization and there's a lot of great things about Red Bull I spoke about Dance Your Style last week I think it was one of the best battles of the year um, but it's just I think for the fairness of the the people competing and stuff it's nice to have this stuff out in the open for everyone to know to understand what's going on um, so that moving forward we can know whether we should enter or not, you know, um, or, or ha like what the deal is. Oh, if I enter this, that means I'm sacrificing my chance to do Dance Your Style or I'm sacrificing my chance to do BC1. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Again, if I'm missing something, I apologize. Uh, but I don't know that I am. So I would like to know what's happening. Anyway, um... Yeah, and then uh, last few things. I'll move on and just wrap this up early. Um, top 8 Battle happened in Ireland. The name of it is called Top 8 Street Dance Battle. Um, that looked cool. I think uh, Ice and Josh and Breaks were there. Obviously from London, there was a few, like some Irish people there. I think I saw Jesse there. Um, and obviously the Ireland scene were there. It looked like a cool battle from everything I saw. We posted the winners, so check that out. Uh, shout out to Top 8, top eight Battle. Um, if I can make it next time, I'll come down. Um, worth checking out their Insta and seeing, you know, um, when the next event is. Dancers Delight's coming up this weekend. Um, I was going to go through all the lineup, but... To be honest with you, I'm not super familiar with every single person on the lineup, and I don't think it would be fair to do that only about some of them and not the rest. Um, the lineup is out on their page, so you can check it out. Um, Dancers Light is usually a cool event. It's like, it's a bit more of like, it's not for like a, it's not like a sitting down, relaxing, like, oh, that was an interesting piece. It's more like, it's like a hype kind of event, and you're standing and drinking and uh, the performances are maybe more like energetic than like a long theater piece or something. Um, but yeah, if that's your taste, it's cool. And I will probably, will, I'm going to go, so I'll probably talk about it on next week's podcast, what I thought about it and stuff. But, um, yeah, that's on Friday night. And then on Saturday, um, Kate Scanlon is putting on an event called The Bridge. It just got announced today. Um, let me see what details I can bring up about it. Uh, yeah, so it's on Saturday the 23rd from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Leak Street Arches. But if you go to Scanners Inc., Scanners Inc. on Instagram, the, all the details are there. Um, it looks fun. There's like workshops. There's a, a b-boy battle, breaking battle, sorry. Um, and I think it's free, so why not? It looks fun. I'll be there. Um, and I think that's it, to be completely honest with you. Um, there's probably other bits and pieces that happen, but um, yeah, just a quick update on these ones. I um, hope everyone had a good week. I hope everyone has a good week coming up. Um, check out the capsule.ldn. Uh, check out the Duke London podcast. We just had um, Jay Funk on after his win at Dance Your Style. That was a fun one. Nice to catch up with him. Known that guy for a long time. Um... And yeah, having another guest tomorrow and that will be released on 
So when this comes out, it will be today that I'm recording the next guest. And that will be released on Sunday. And this will happen again next week, Tuesday. So see you guys then. Thanks for tuning in. And um, catch you soon. Peace. You got potential.